Hello and welcome back to round one, back nine coverage of the 2022 Waco Annual Charity Open, the second stop on the Disc Golf Pro Tour. I'm Jeremy Colling, joined by Paul Eulabuddy. You think there's somebody out there called welcome back and then every time we're just addressing him? I certainly do. And Kevin Jones, the best looking player on this card on the front nine, five under. Definitely the scoring nine of the two on this course right now. Absolutely. Saying he's the best looking when Kayla Visca's on the card, though, is a <laughs> stretch, <laughs> my man. And we got to give a shout out real quick to Clay Edwards with that seven under on the front nine. Pars on one and nine and birdies for the rest of the holes. Charlotte, North Carolina, dude. Good stuff there, buddy. On to hole 10. Par four, 591 feet. Pretty much dead straight the whole way. Just barely moves off to the left at the very end. But it's just one of those classic, really you can't design a much better hole for a straight shot. It's no, fantastic. totally agree. I mean, it's just enough trees to keep you honest, wide enough fairway to have fun. And Kale, after just the most insane birdie yeah, on hole nine. Ever. Oh, what an incredible throw putt. I mean, we got to call that one of the best putts of the year. That's looking better. Yeah. Kale getting it turned over a little too much. That's going to mm -hmm. be tough with him, especially, you know, we keep mentioning him. He's not predominant sidearm player. He's mm -hmm. going to have to stretch out, and that's going to be tough. Kevin in a perfect position. Chris. A little wide. If this is overstable, it could be in a good position. Actually, that's mm -hmm. not the worst place left side of the or that's right fine. side of the fairway. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's absolutely fine. And really, there's no place where Chris can't work. He's got a great forehand. Obviously, an incredible backhand. Great scramble player. A little pop on yeah, that. Lowry. Don't skip into the woods. And it's just in the woods. That's fine. That's a great tee shot. He's going to love that. Okay. And not many of you are joining us without watching the front nine, but if you need a little bit of a recap, it's a high of 38 degrees, sustained gusts of 25 miles an hour, uh, upwards of mid 30s. We're in the woods here at the beast so the wind is down but that's only going to be for the next couple of holes when we get into the open you're going to see a completely different disc golf course chris is sliding that one up into the bullseye beautiful like a computer beep boop okay, i'm gonna have to go a little flex and, not yeah. coming back but it did kind of slither over there to circle's edge, and I think he's going to have that straddle jumper. I think it's going to be kind of open. Yeah, he's going to wish he had it back, but he definitely has the ability to do something special. Sidearm Anheuser. Hopefully this is insanely stable. And not stable enough, but oh, good tree at the end inside the circle. Really good approach there. Good angle shaping. I was actually surprised to see that he had that difficult of an approach after that beautiful drive. Nose up. This is going to be very close. Anyone in the game throw a better fadeaway shot than Kale? Like he really fully leans into his shot, and he just keeps moving to the side after he throws it and really watches it into the green. You know what I mean by that? I do, yeah. No, he's, he's got a lot of body control. I think a lot of it has to do with that nose-up release that he loves. You know, you get that nose-up, and then you really have to go from up to down, which causes you to move back a little bit. Lowry's just a few low putts away, getting just a bit higher from shooting a really good round. I mean, he's even, or one under right now, but he's just hit the cage barely low on so many putts so far. Kevin hit a nice one on the first hole though yes certainly was a really nice putt but maybe he was trying to miss it low and the headwind lifted it hmm maybe good birdie for Chris 
Dickerson and Kale has this left for par and you can see he's kind of just letting the gust pass if he can. Freaking Gus. <laughs> hate that guy. <laughs> Gus and welcome. <laughs> Best friends. So annoying, Gus. Kale delivering the par putt. And Lowry, that's a... Don't just say that to hello and welcome. We love that dude. No, he's a he's a good dude. Hole 11, par 3, 279 feet. The play down the middle is just pick a side of this tree. If you're going with a backhand mid-range, you probably want to go to the right side. If you're going forehand, you want to be hitting the ground just past that to kind of skip up to the rooted mound. I This is the one hole on the course where I, I'm just waiting for the ace. Yeah, it is kind of surprising we haven't seen it happen once. I mean... Because you got to throw it hard enough to get up there, yeah, you yeah. know? And then both side arm and backhand can kind of squeak through those trees and give it a good run, and I'm just I'm just surprised. It's just perched so pretty up on the top yeah, of the hill. I think too. it would be a great one to, to see happen. Good shot for Kale. Unfortunately, filtered back down the hill a little bit. He's going to have edge of circle uphill putt for the birdie. Sidearm flip up with an overstable putt. Oh. Not as overstable as he would have liked it to be. Mm. I believe that was his A2. And now we are going into the direction of the headwind for the remainder of the round until 17 and 18. So even though we are in the woods, the wind is down a little bit. There's still definitely an influence of that wind coming down that fairway. And this is the point in my round where I remember thinking that my hands were extra cold oh my gosh yes and so you know that little reaction from larry right there where he he like flex his hand it kind of looked like oh. oh man i can't feel my hand type thing so that could be a problem and for a finished person to be having trouble with their hand i mean somebody who's used to playing in the colder conditions you know that says a lot right there sure kevin with a good out larry making as making that fairway as big as possible with the forehand Anheuser, but he's still going to have to make a nice putt from the bottom of the hill. Chris, however, wow. Beautiful. You don't Great see touch. This is what I love about it. Watch this. He mm. throws it up with a little stall, and if it's higher or has more speed, that's not going in. Or more spin. I mean, that's just he lofts that up there so cleanly. It doesn't have anything... What else can it do besides just drop straight Perfect down? Perfect speed, exactly. Making the basket as big as possible. Kale! The basket wasn't as big for Kale, but that still stays in. He even gives it the good old fist pump. I love that. And he probably did not think that was going to land in the basket after it left his hand, but that's a good feeling to take that disc out of the basket for the birdie. Fires it up there into the chains. Yep, good par save. And Kevin, another turbo putt, which gives me just a little bit of anxiety every time I see it. Don't know why. I've never seen him miss one, but I still don't know how I feel about it. Hole 12, the second hole on this course, and the actually in the last three holes that used to be called a par five, nothing's changed, just a par four now. 609 feet. But it's just 600 of the strangest nine feet you'll ever play. There's no whole shape like this that I've played anywhere else in the world. No, down and then up and to the right. No ceiling. Then you have ceiling, but you can't use it. Down a shelf, up a shelf. It is very specific off the tee. High sidearm for Chris. I like this. Way down there. Yeah. And I, I think he's going to like to use the left to right backhand which mm -hmm. you need to be on the left hand side or the right hand side right right hand side to do yeah and that that's the thing here if you are a forehand player so this isn't going to be the greatest spot for kale i would love that spot right for me for the forehand approach that's perfect but kale wants to be more on the right side and there's the wind kind of sneaking through for the first time there is an opening on the right that is just a full-on mm -hmm. Misfire from Kevin. Don't usually see that. Yeah. 
And that is a good forehand, not the skip you want if you do want to throw a forehand second. He's going to be blocked off by those two trees in the fairway. Kevin is in a tough spot here, though. To try to save par, he's going to have to do something miraculous here. I don't think Ew, it's even... that's That's bad. Okay, this it could have caught more angle. I thought it was going to roll deeper into the woods. And from there, he's going to have to throw sidearm. The closest you can put it from there, I'm going to say 40 feet, and that's with a miracle shot. I agree. Lowry, nice shot. To get to the top of the hill from the right side with a forehand is really good. A par here does not feel like a par, even on a calm warm day four is absolutely fine on hole 12 when your hands are frozen anything better than four is just it feels like an eagle and chris might be feeling eagly he's gonna have a look eaglato that's what they say <laughs> is that italian spanish for eagle what is that i think it's spanish for an eagle I don't think that's right hmm Kale. Wow. Look at the angle he control. Just, he just what? catches the very top of that without catching the teeny <sighs> top. He's absolutely parked there. That was peered. Really can't manipulate the disc any better than that right there from that angle for Kale. And yeah, as you can see, the forehand just has to hyzer eventually and... If that had missed the trees, I think you're right. That's still 45, 50 feet away. But now Kevin's going to be outside circle two, most likely, for the par. Looking like he's going to be surrendering his second bogey of the round. Good touch. Oh my gosh, tried to say something about it. Kevin almost jamming it from 75. It was a great effort. Gil can throw this one in with that nice high lofty. Oh, yeah, no. He's had two of those today that's <sighs> kind of danced on the rim. And that was so similar to the putt and the angle and the spot where it hit on just the last hole where it did stay in. And Chris off the top. And I just got to take a moment here to shout out my buddy Nate Perkins, who was the only player in the field to three holes, nine and 12 today. Both of those are picking up a stroke and a half, nearly two strokes per hole on the field. That's insane. Yeah, that's really good getting through those two with six strokes total. So we'll have three pars and one bogey on 12. Pretty normal scores for that hole. And now that's it for the woods, folks. This is when the course really shows why it's called the beast. Yeah. Calm hole day, this is birdie city, but not today. No. Today is not that day. Hole 13 is a par four, 555 feet, playing 838 feet in this crazy headwind. It's still going to be a pretty easy par four for the most part. If you can get off the tee and beat these trees right in front of you, you'll have a manageable shot into the green. It's just the headwind is so devastating. One missed angle and it could, it could that that was probably a yeah. savey tree. Yeah. The savior tree. And and getting out there wide is great. It really opens up the, the biggest part of the fairway for Chris, giving him backhand and forehand options. But I mean, we are in a completely different world as you see those feather banners just ripping. Oh, man. Still good. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. You, anything past those initial trees, you're taking it with a smile. Yeah, you get 300 feet. You got 255 in. Wonderful. Wow. Great second what? and third and fourth oh, yeah, skip okay. there. This is really, I'm not sure if this is going to be fun or like tough to watch what we're going to see for the next five holes. I'm hoping fun. Look at this. <laughs> but oh, probably a good tree again. <laughs> if that rolls, it's going way left. I, when, when we were checking the forecast, 38 high, it said feels like 22. 
and I think that they got that wrong. It felt like it was 18 degrees. This is a pretty good shot from, from Kevin from way back there. I mean, you just don't have discs that are going to hold up in that type of headwind to get the distance that you need to throw that shot. I mean, he's only 400 feet, but... And we also don't have hands that can hold enough blood to keep our hands warm. Like, it's just not... Like, what? That was insane! What a shot from Kale! Playing the wide shot near the bathroom. And look at this skip. Oh, he hits the concrete. That's perfect. Playing it long of the basket, giving him the tail and putt. You cannot throw a better approach from where no. Kale was. That was insane. Oh, please. Speaking help. of bathrooms, that's... Oh, that guy kicked it. Yeah, that was... Uh, Probably saved him from going in the... The woman's bathroom. Yeah. No, actually, I think the men's side is on the left. Yeah. Here. So that was fine. He was uh, heading the right way. Right direction. Hook up. I guarantee you that's one of Chris's most stable discs and did not even think about hitting Heiser. deal i think it's fair to say that each hole whatever the par is labeled at for this next this hole and the next three you can just add one stroke to oh, it no. and think that that's the accurate par like whatever it normally takes to get to the pin add one more throw he wants to give it a bit buddy and yeah then he, yeah no need. Kale for the lone bird. Oh, look at that flag behind him. <laughs> wow. Beautiful putt. If there's one great thing about these targets is with a tailwind, if you go dead center, those that those chains are holding your disc yes. in. And that is a really nice feeling when you have a tailwind putt. You can really jam it in there. Uh, I mean, it doesn't matter what you're playing on in the headwind here with this much wind. You don't even know what to do. Like, do you go upside down? Do you start making up shots? Like, go to America, Larry said. It'll be fun, they said. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's good weather, they said. Yeah. Not this year quite yet on the Disc Golf Pro Tour. I know we're going to find some good weather somewhere. I think it's tomorrow but we haven't quite gotten there yet. Hole 14, par three, 303 feet. And let me just tell you right now, the scoring average today on this hole is hilarious. It's hilarious. 3.34, and this is one of the easiest holes on the course any other day. Most stable disc goes right at it. That is an unbelievably good drive. I can't even... My job is to tell you how good that drive was, and I cannot tell you how good that drive was. I don't know how he did it. I don't know how stable this thing is, but I don't think it's stable uh, enough. That's so good. Well, made a way to make I'm, me sound dumb. <laughs> we sound so dumb right now. A guy in my car this turned into a tomahawk when he tried to throw a sidearm. I almost hit your I'm face. not kidding. It turned into a tomahawk and went over to the what left side. What is going on Why are right they now? doing this? <laughs> this is unreal. This looks like just a simple pitch. It is anything but. Follow flight? Sure. <laughs> they, it's not just the headwind. It's not just the no. headwind. It's the fact that you're ha you're, you, you have 10 icicles attached to your wrists. You don't like you cannot hold your disc because you're literally just squeezing onto a slippery piece of plastic. I, I cannot believe these drives. There's the tomahawk. I didn't want to see someone mess up, but I kind of was like, all right, somebody, please make this seem, show people why this is a 3.34 average. <laughs> he watched them throw it. He's like, oh, yeah, not too. I could put a little Annie on this. Don't ever do that again. <laughs> Annie in this wind. Oh, and, boy. And this this is why the average is high. I mean, he's going to have that. He's hoping for a lull in the wind. 
Yeah. For sure. Kale has to throw this. Out of basket. Oh! What? Backhand birdie in this is... Ooh-wee. Oh, my gosh. What a genius. Back-to-back -back birdies. We are going to have three birdies on this one, and that is not going to seem cool tomorrow. Guarantee you, we're going to expect to see a star frame on this one tomorrow, but that is really, really good stuff there for our card. Going to the knee. Really good. I'm, I'm, I almost literally just started clapping. That was a really nice putt. <laughs> True story, Paul. Walking to the next tee, our group got all threes. We said that we were going to, in the theme of the Jomez star frame, we were going to donate to charity on our own just because we considered it a star frame in those conditions, getting all pars. So that's, that's my dumb story. Hole 15, Paul, walk us through it. Hole 15. Oh, man, what is there to say? You're going to throw it right out of bounds or left out of bounds. You choose because you don't get either one of them. And look, it just doesn't have a chance to stop. Like Kale's shot. And you think I'm joking? I'm not. I'm not joking. Yeah. Landing it inbounds on this hole mm -mm. off the tee is a complete feat because. Mm -mm. It's not. Somebody will. Four point five three average. I mean, this is a five hundred and fifty-eight foot, quote unquote, par three. Oh boy. That's staying out of bounds. Safe. Ob. And that was about as close as you can get is using that wall. Yeah, yeah, totally. It's like the only thing you this, can really do. I think this is the play. Sure, but watch this. Lift, OB. Unless it hits the wall. Nope. It, it's just, there's no... I think the sidearm really wide yes. is, but it's so hard to do. You can't I like trust this. It. I like this. Well, I did like this. No, I like oh. that. Oh, wow. A plus. A plus plus. Mm -hmm. Huge drive. And it actually, over to the right side, opens up the second shot even more. We're talking about a second shot. This is a par three, guys and girls. It's a par three. Yeah, quote unquote, again, I have to say, it's... It, you, Get wrecked. This is the third hole that we have played so far on this course that just a few years ago, nothing changed, was considered a par four. It's a par four today. Even even if it were called a par four, it would still be the hardest hole on the course. That's an insanely good shot. Wow. That is so good. Immediately throws the gloves on, and you have to. That guy didn't have to, like, push his scooter. He could have just put his foot on the thing and just strolled on by <laughs> with the wind. <laughs> tip for you next time bud all right sit good dig that's a good spot for him he's made some totally. good putts for, with that exact wind i like that play a lot okay don't take any time if you get an opportunity with the wind down you go quick there's no go through your routine it's fire when ready very important upshot for dickerson right here he's sitting at five under and if that gets away from him, oh. that's a you know triple bogey. Did he hit the front railing, right? Yeah, and kind of and snuck went under. back eighty feet. Yeah, I did not see the roll away. That's wow. Good effort. That would have been the best birdie of that's, the day. No, that was his upshot. Oh, it's not even a birdie. It would have just been par. Yeah, but it feels like birdie. I mean, it still feels like a par four. Oh. oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Strum the guitar, Gail. <laughs> it was a rock star move. It blew it right in. <laughs> that was awesome. Oh my goodness. Oh, fire it in there. Nice. I really want the editors to go back there and replay Kale's putt, but then throw in the. <laughs> <laughs> He's just strumming up <laughs> the lights exploding behind him. Oh. That was a great four save from both Kevin and Kale. Yes. Oh, 
man. It, For bogey. Yeah, it, not really. I mean, not even close to what real birdie and bogey means in the world. Agree. Totally. Yeah. No, 100%. <laughs> these, these aren't real conditions that you have to face. Uh, where I, This is the worst I've ever played in. Conditions why with the cold yeah. match with the wind. And we were actually lucky. It was a sixty percent chance of rain. Could you imagine if there was rain on top of this? I I think we would have had a fifty percent dropout rate. If just Look at this tee shot from <laughs> Kale, just blown over, not even a chance. This one's a par four. Yep. Thank goodness. Six hundred and nine feet and just nothing but air blowing at you at a thousand miles an hour. Kevin. Oh my God. You angle master. How did you get over 200 feet? That was fantastic. Here's the thing. They don't make a lot of discs that handle this. Uh -huh. Even your best disc you're afraid is going to flip over. Your best one, the one that we rely on. You know, we're thro throwing the ones that... Yeah, they're in there just in case there's like uh -huh. a situation where I, and then now it's our main dog. Yep. I have, I have a question because Corey Ellis brought this up in my group today asking me if somebody, if a player that has a 75 mile an hour arm speed throws a disc into a 25 mile an hour headwind, is it the disc reacting as if it were being thrown a hundred miles an hour? It took me a second to think about it. I know we've got some physics experts out there. Please help me walk through this. Why is a disc turning over so much into a 25 mile an hour headwind? Look at this shot. Genius maneuver. Oh no! He gets random branched? Random twigged. Oh my, I mean, I don't know if it had enough to get all the way there, but that definitely. Never gonna know now. Oh my goodness, that, sh that, that should have been 20 feet closer minimum. I'm going to say this just because I'm going to try to help kill. I'm going mm -hmm. to say that's unmakeable. And then every time I do... Yeah, I'm, but I'm not even trying to help him. I don't think it's makeable. I, I don't even think it's runnable. No, it's runnable. <laughs> yeah, you just have, you have to go... You have to throw it like you're aiming 60 feet long. Yeah. You have to try to. I think they are. It. Yeah. And it's still not happening. Mm hmm. Kevin's got putter in, which is bizarre. But that's. Oh, no. Oh, oh God, shorty, dude. They're mm. all running it. They're the best, man. Mm hmm. That's what you do. You're not scared of nothing. They're the best Nobody. around. Instant regret. Come on, Kale. Looks like he's going full... Full bid. Comes up short. And you know Kevin's going Gerald Senderson here. Ah, coming up low. That's a par that's gonna bite for Kevin after that booming tee shot. Good putt. And Lowry, birdie. The only player on the card with the birdie. Biggest difference difference is not only did he get a little bit closer to pin height, he kept that a little bit wider, so he had the left to right as opposed to just the straight headwind. Oh, get in. Ooh. Okay, couple of pars and a bird. We're moving on up. Focus ready in any of those pressure thoughts and really center yourself like where you're at and the shot you're throwing trying to just really let everything besides the basket bleed away <laughs> Thank you.
Well, good news and bad news, Paul. The bad news, the wind is ripping. The good news is it's a tailwind. So 17, which is normally very, very difficult, is made a little bit easier to get to the landing zone. As you see there, 290 is an incredible tee shot. Most of these players with a really good tee are gonna be looking at about 330 to 350. Very good. Wow, look at that reaction. Perfect spot. Anywhere in there, about 50, I would consider a perfect shot anywhere in that 50 foot yes, radius right there. Absolutely. The, can't get much more difficult for a backhand only player in this wind to put it down with Anheuser. The whole time the wind is just pounding it down. It does not allow you to get the disc over to the right at all. And, and to get a look at Birdie, you have to move the disc to the right. And not only that, his upshot's going to be. Back in upshot? Yep. Pack a lunch. And that's going to be short of ideal landing zone. You really need to get past that clearing. Especially with the wind we have today. You, mm. can't, you can't hang it out anymore over the water. Right. Like, I don't know what he's going to do from there. Chris, a good skip is necessary. Look at the skip and roll. Now, that could be in danger of going out of bounds down the hill. Okay, it hangs on. What's Kittle going to do here? I mean, there's no way to play it safe. And look at this. Oh my gosh. It looked so perfect. That one hurt. I mean, you can't throw that any better from that spot. No. Nope. With a backhand, in my opinion. Look at this. Oh boy. Oh. That could be in a in a worse spot, honestly, depending on where they give that to him. Yeah. Yeah. He, at this Kev moment, has the power; he can go over. He doesn't go over. I'm in. I'm scared for his safety. Uh, oh. Now here's the thing. Those trees that are by the by the green really block the wind. So really the only wind section that you're concerned with is this 15, 20 feet that Chris is at before he passes into that. Oh, sit, sit. Oh, wonderful, sit. Okay, yes, Chris. That was incredible. But the wind doesn't really affect your shot once it gets on the other side of those trees. Right. So you really just need to control the first Curious to see. Okay, they gave him a good spot. That's good. Sit. Yeah, this needs Go to in. get down. Sit. Okay. And look, the flag is not even moving. It's just comical how different it is on the other side of the trees. I know I, where I'd be building my house. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh my goodness. It's just, it's crazy how much 150 feet makes such a big difference right now. Mm. One of the hardest putts is slanted hill. Not a very good, not very good footing. Right to left crosswind when you have that up and down stroke. Wind gets under it and lifts it very fast. Mm hmm. And Kevin, he was five down through eight holes, is now three under. And, and really just a perfect example of how difficult the back nine is compared to the front nine. Kale's about to move to four. Yep. Really, really good score. Which is a good score. I mean, anything under par is wonderful 18 is normally a toss-up whether or not you're going for it or not but we have such a strong tailwind that it is certainly enticing today no guarantees that you even get the par if you play it safe off to the left and chris is going for it i like that he got it turned over but the problem is oh no problems there once you turn it over it is a slight right to left tail uh -huh. and so then it just push it down exactly uh-huh 
you want to keep it on all hyzer because then the wind's actually going to speed it up. I love this. What a play. A sit. What oh, a play. beautiful, yeah. Oh, Lowry. And that's just going to be a tap in from there. <laughs> yeah. After he lays it up because I <laughs> don't see him running that butt. He's running it. Kale. Oh, and that's it's out of be bounds. A pretty yeah. Much. I mean, well, you can go like 50 feet up. Right to the edge of the lake. And Kevin. Oh, no. I don't know. I don't. It's got to go. Maybe. It's got to go. Oh, my gosh. It Sit. does. But then. God, he has so much power. I didn't think he was going to cross, and he gets over, but skips OB long. Oh, it looks like oh, the wait group. Wait a second. Yeah, it looks like the group gave him that as it crossed. So hard to tell from back there. Yeah. Uh, that is a huge benefit for Kale, Absolutely. though. Absolutely. The difference between that shot and the one on the other side of the lake is, I mean, a stroke easily. Plus, with the wind doing all this crazy stuff, you just don't. That's wow. Here's the thing you guys need to know there's nothing Kevin could have done differently than that right there. There's no way you could throw the disc to get that close. And, and into that wind, there's nothing you can do. He's going to have to lay this next one up. Yep. Mm. No, you were right. I don't think you... How could you even run that? Oh, my gosh. It happens so quick, doesn't it, Paul? It really does. <gasps> what an absolutely brutal finishing hole. Oh. Oh, catch that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I, wow. Let me guess. Garrett toot it. Uh, let me see. Yep. Garrett. Garrett Gerthy toot it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> of course he did. Actually, 12 players in total toot 18. No way. Uh, yeah, with the tail one, it's not that surprising, really. But... You're also going to see the sixes and the sevens and like what was the worst score? There was an eight. Uh, so happy this round is over for all the players. Can we get some good weather, folks? Eight under, it's not even realistic. You just saw what these players went through. Eight under is insane. Nick Carl, Paul Macbeth. I'm sorry, I didn't even see the third. Uh, Luke Humphreys. Luke Humphreys with the eight under. It is going to be an awesome day Andrew tomorrow. Andrew Fish with a six under. Andrew Fish with a six under. That will be our lead group for round two here at Waco. 55 degree highs, very little wind, much lower scores. More fun to watch. I had a blast watching that. I have anxiety. I need to go like yeah, that's true, bundle too. up near a fire and put my hands in a mitten and get cozy with a blanket like the founders clubs do <laughs> members do <laughs> yeah of course well thank you to you guys for watching round one you got through it with us we've got round two and three coming up the, for the next two days here in waco texas we'll see you then